So uh, this is a session about building cross-platform applications using React Native. Uh, how many of you here have uh, heard about React? React JS as a web framework. Awesome. How many of you here uh, have uh, written anything with React JS as a web framework? OK. How many of you here have done any React Native work? Uh, not as many. So my understanding is most of you are here to try to figure out what React Native is, what it does. Is that right? What else do you want out of the session? I'm not going to start until 11.30, but if I'm able to get the expectations right, I might get into, the, uh, into some intro part or go to the advanced part. So tell me what you guys want to know. So advantages. advantages of React Native over native or over? So that gentleman said advantages of React Native over cross pl other cross-platform applications. I'm guessing things like Xamarin, Cordova, good. Uh, the gentleman here said React Native with Angular. That's a good one. I, I, I think I'll address that. Uh, so uh, the question there was the React Native workflow. So I'm actually going to be taking the risk and doing a live demo. I'm probably also going to need your help to. Uh, so what I'm planning to do is build an app right here in 20 minutes, distribute it to you guys, and you guys test it. So that will kind of cover the workflow. And a ton of things can go wrong also. But that's the plan. So workflow should be covered. The question, the uh, gentleman here says, sharing code between iOS, Android, and the web. So yes, I'm going to be talking about that also. Uh, in case you guys have heard about React XP, I'm going to be talking about that. That's OK. So uh, I'm actually planning to build an iOS app, an Android app, a Windows app, and a website. Now, that's super ambitious in 20 minutes. But let's see where it goes. Uh, what else do you guys want to hear? And for those of you guys, you who just joined, uh, I'm just talking to people so that I don't have to sit down here and pray that my demo works. So I'm just talking to people about uh, what they want to hear, what are the expectations. And it looks like most of you here have learned or heard about React JS, but are looking to get started with React Native for developing mobile applications. Uh, the other thing is, I'm sure a lot of people uh, also saw the description that said uh, there, there were going to be two speakers. Uh, the speaker from Facebook, he's actually going to come in tomorrow. Uh, and he's going to be talking about how Facebook is using React and React Native. So that speaker's name is Adam Wolf. He's the director of engineering at Facebook. And he runs the team that builds React, React Native, and GraphQL. So unfortunately, he couldn't get in here today. So I'm going to be covering the base for him. I'm going to pretend as if I'm, I'm Adam. But uh, most of the talk is going to be very, very similar. In fact, we exchange slides. So the slides are going to be similar. But if you want, you can also attend the, session, the exact same session tomorrow at 11.30 and hear him talk about React and React Native, specifically from, a face, from Facebook's perspective. Now, given that Facebook is using React and React Native in their production applications, I mean, Instagram actually has a good uh, part of it written in React Native. Even the main Facebook app is React Native. Uh, the Facebook Ads Manager is actually completely React Native. So you will be able to li listen from him about what their experiences was, and that'll give you an advantage. Uh, that'll give you a good idea about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of using React and React Native uh, versus other technologies. <coughs> uh, is there anything else that you guys want to hear from me? Any anything else that you want to know about React, React Native that I should cover in the talk? Okay. Uh, the other thing is uh, my team actually has a booth on the far side there. It's under the developer tools. It's probably called mobile or something like that. Uh, if you have any questions or if you, if you have an application that you want to play around with and try React Native, come talk to us. I'm actually happy to sit down with you, s help you set up your machine and set up like a sample application that you probably can take back to your organization, show them, hey, this is what React Native is, and start playing around with it. Uh, I was also hoping to cover things like animations and how smooth you can make your applications. Uh, it's, not, it's probably not going to be done in 20 minutes, but I'll, let me just show you while I'm waiting for it. Here's the demo app that I built, and let me just show you what it is. So I'm going to open up QuickTime Player. So I'm just trying to project my I, uh, for iPhone here. 
Let's see what happened. Uh huh. That's probably because Parallels is also open. It's taking a little longer. Maybe I'll just show you after I close Parallel after the demo, so. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry? Sure. So uh, the gentleman here was talking about using Flux or Redux. Uh, before I begin, how many of you here have heard about Flux or know what Flux is? Awesome. How many of you have used Flux, Redux, or any one of those million varieties? Not many, OK. So I may not be able to get into details about Flux. Uh, Adam is actually a very good person to talk about, because his team runs the Flux. Uh, I, I mean, Dan Abrama works for Adam. So uh, definitely catch, catch up with him tomorrow, or we can talk after the session. So I may not be able to get into the details of Flux, because it's a little, uh, the thing is, Flux is actually a little hard to explain in 20 minutes, given that you have all the other things, right? Uh, we have five more minutes, but given that there are a lot of people here, do, do you think I should get started? Yes? Awesome. Uh, so I'm going to break the rule and just get started. So thank you, everyone, for coming to my session, uh, coming to Build 2017. Uh, my name is Parshuraman. Uh, you can call me Ram, the last three uh, letters of my name. Uh, I'm a principal program manager in the Visual Studio Mobile Center team and the team that builds developer tools for uh, JavaScript-based mobile applications. So that's a mouthful. It's just a fancy way of saying my team builds uh, things like the Apache Cordova extension for Visual Studio. We build the uh, Apache Cordova extension for VS Code. And more recently, our team has been focusing on doing a whole bunch of React and React Native stuff. In fact, you must have seen me speak at the last two ReactCon React uh, San Francisco. We've also been going and doing a lot of community interaction. We actually we are the team that owns Code Push. If you've heard of what Code Push is, but that's what uh, we are. And uh, I also used to. I also am a committer in the Apache Cordova project. But more more recently, my focus has pretty much been React and React Native. Uh, <coughs> Today, we are going to be talking about building cross-platform applications with React and React Native. Now, when I say cross-platform, I'm meaning we are going to be building applications, as I said, with iOS, with Android. Of course, you are you're at a Microsoft conference, so Windows, right? So iOS, Android, and Windows. And we will be using React.js as a way to build those applications. Now, React.js is just a web framework like Angular or jQuery or Backbone. Uh, it, you basically write it in either ES6 or TypeScript or even plain simple JavaScript that you know. So, and because it's all in the uh, written in JavaScript, it also makes sense to not just write applications for iOS, Android, and Windows. We should probably also do it for uh, the web, right? So, this is what we are going to attempt in the next 20 minutes. We're going to try to build a sample application that runs on iOS, Android, Windows, and web. And I'm probably going to fail miserably, but that's fine. Uh, so the good thing about React is this is how the React code looks like. And how many of you here have never seen React before? There are a good number. So the first time you're seeing React, you'll be like, hey, that's neither JavaScript, nor XML, nor, J nor HTML, right? What is all that? What is all this here in the middle? So bear with me. This is probably the biggest shock a lot of people get when they start writing React applications. Uh, this language is called JSX. It's a way to include XML components inside your JavaScript library. Effectively, what it says is this entire thing can be JavaScript, except that uh, because you want to make your life a little easier and you want to keep all of your components in one place, you just say, hey, I want my markup and my business logic all at the same place. And that's why you say view and text, et cetera. You kind of put your uh, templates inside your, uh, inside your code. If you look at Angular, so if you've never done React, but if you've done Angular, uh, you remember in Angular, you have uh, templates. You have the option of either saving the templates externally, or you can use string, in, uh, string templates, the ESX string templates, the ticks to put it inside the source code, right? Think of this to be very, very similar. JSX is compiled using a process called Babel. Uh, there are multiple compilers for JSX, but effectively, all of this code ultimately gets translated into some kind of JavaScript. So though you are writing view and text here, it's going to get compiled or transpiled into a JavaScript function that says react.create class of text. That's, that's pretty much it. And uh, uh, tomorrow, as I was saying, Adam Wolf from Facebook, who's the director of engineering for React, React Native, and GraphQL, he's going to be here. And he's going to talk about why Facebook kind of went with the, this approach and what is the exact reason or advantages of using this. But one of the biggest advantages that I see is 
This gives you declarative user interface. So effectively here, you're declaring what your user interface is going to be. You're going to say, hey, this is a component. This component can be, a co can be rating or comments or stars or a uh, shopping cart or whatever. This is a component. And all the logic of my component is going to be in one place. The other advantage is because it's written like this, when you're writing an iOS app, you can take this text tag and convert it to a native iOS element. Similarly, you can do the same thing for Android, for Windows, and for the web. So though it's called a text there, you can transpile it to a div or a span. Though it's called a text there, you can actually transpile, transpile it to an Android text view widget. And this is one of the biggest powers of using React or React Native. Using React, you declare your UI. You just say, hey, it's a bunch of views and text. What does that view mean in a native sense? That translation is automatically taken care of you. And this is one of the biggest advantages of React Native. What it gives you is, unlike Cordova or unlike any of the other te uh, competing technologies, all of the elements that are created are actually native UI elements. So if you're using a Windows phone, for example, or a Windows device, this is a real Windows control. It's not something that, which is a div or span that's styled to, to look like a Windows component. It's a real component. <coughs> the interesting thing is because that's all written in JavaScript, there's a JavaScript engine that runs it. And there are a ton of advantages to that. I'll get to that a little later. But effectively, all of that React code runs in a JavaScript engine. Uh, typically, something called JavaScript Core or JSC in case of iOS. So JSC is already packaged in your iOS device. So it just uses JSC on your iOS device. It uses JSC on an Android device. If you're using a Windows phone, it uses Chakra Core. And if you're using web, hey, guess what? The web already has the web browser already has a JavaScript engine, right? Like the web browser already has Chakra or Spider Monkey or one of those JavaScript engines. It just can use that. On the other side of the world, all of this is native user interfaces. And that's what makes React Native so attractive. You write JavaScript code, but what you get at the end of the day is a real native application. Now, um, when you design or develop your application, this is what you package and send over to your phones. So you basically package the JavaScript engine with the JavaScript engine and the native UI as a part of your application. And then the, the reason, it, uh, because it's JavaScript, what you typically can do is you, ha you can have all of your source files, all of your dependencies, the crazy dependency mo magic. You can actually use NPM for managing all of that. So if you're a web developer, this is very, very familiar to you. You don't have to learn Objective-C, Java, nothing. As you've been doing using the web, you pay, take all of it. You have a packager similar to, say, Grunt or Gulp or Webpack. How many of you here have used Webpack? A good number. How many of you, you have at least used one packager? Almost all of you, right? So this is, this is exactly that. This is like Gulp or Grunt or Webpack. It's a server that runs, which picks up all of your source codes and source code and puts it inside the JavaScript engine. <coughs> Sorry. Now, uh, as this gentleman here asked, uh, what is the difference between, like, say, React Native and other technologies like Cordova? So one of the biggest differences here is React Native is actually native user interface. Cordova, on the other hand, Cordova, PhoneGap, Ionic, for example, on the other hand, they are actually web views. So your Cordova application is a full screen web view, and your UI controls are styled using HTML and CSS to look as if they are na native components. They are not really native components. They are using, they just use the web view. In fact, <coughs> React Native is very, very similar to Xamarin. Uh, in case of Xamarin, you write it in C Sharp, which is compiled to ASM or uh, Interpret Language, and then you use native UI, right? React Native is the JavaScript equivalent of it, if you may, may want to call it that. Here's a quick and handy table that <coughs> tries to compare the different features. I'm not going to go through all of this, but the quick way to look at it is, though the languages differ at the top, as you go down the stack and as you go down the development process, everything starts to get very, very similar. Now, uh, let's get into the demo, because the bulk of the presentation was going to be about demo and showing you how to build it. I mean, the talk was called Building Cross-Platform Applications, not talking about it. right? So let's go build something. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is, in this demo, I'm going to be doing a couple of things. One, I'm going to be using React Native Windows and building a Windows application. I'm going to be using this new framework called React XP that lets me build my application for iOS, Android, Windows, and the web. I'm going to be using VS Code as my editor. And this is super useful because VS Code has a bunch of React and React Native specific uh, uh, tooling uh, capabilities. I'm going to show you those as I build my application. And finally, once the application is built, I'm going to probably try and distribute this application to the 100 people who are sitting in the audience so that you can test it out for me. Does that sound good? OK. Uh, before we begin, how many of you here have a Windows phone? OK. How many of you here have an Android phone? Good. How many of you here have an iOS phone? 
Okay, so Android and iOS are almost similar. So let me just go ahead and build an Android app and an iOS app to start with and distribute it to you guys. You guys play around with it and tell me what to uh, what it feels like, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is, is this big enough for everyone at the back? Good enough? Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a React Native application, you'd say React Native init. And this is going to pretty much download the entire internet. I'm kidding. It's just going to download NPM. But it's going to download a whole lot of stuff. And I'm not going to do that on the conference Wi-Fi. So a shortcut was I just did an R R NP React Native init, and I've already created an application. I'm going to open this in Visual Studio Code. And the things to notice here are there are two startup files called index.android.js and index.ios.js that are already created. These are basically the starting points for both your iOS file, iOS app and your Android app. Now, there is no real reason for them to be separate. One of the advantages of React Native is if you have something.android.js, that'll, that'll get picked up when it's an Android app. If there's a something.ios.js, it'll get picked up when there's an iOS app. So what I'm going to do instead is go back and here create a new folder called app. This is where my main app logic is going to live. And here I'm going to create a new file called index.js and delete all of this and move all that logic into index.js because we just want a single single app, right? I don't want to rewrite my logic for all the three uh, all the three platforms. So I'm going to just have an index.js and it's going to create a thing called a jokes app and uh, this jokes app is going to have like it's, it's just going to say display dad jokes. I mean, I recently became a dad, so I thought dad jokes were funny. I don't know how it works, but yeah, dad jokes are funny. So that's what I'm going to create. So I'm going to delete all of this. And uh, in my index.android.js, I'm going to add this code that says, hey, refer to my import that component from, my, from the app.index.js file and start using it. That's all. For now, ignore this line number six. I'm going to talk about code push a little later. I'm adding it here so that I don't forget it in the end. I'm going to copy this code and make this exact same code in my iOS file. So what this is going to do is I have my iOS file and, and, and my Android file, which refer to my index.js file. Now here, one of the advantages of using VS Code is VS Code actually understands views and texts. So this way, your syntax is pretty well understood. You can actually take care of formatting and all. You don't have to worry about anything. <coughs> so because this is a joke app, I need to go to the internet and fetch a joke, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to this website. And uh, every time a button is clicked, I'm going to go fetch a new joke and display it. I'm going to set the state as a joke. And then the data that I get back, I'm going to say this dot state dot joke. And there you go, VS Code has this autocomplete, right? That's a good, pretty good thing to have. Next, I'm going to add a button. And then I'm going to say, Press here for a joke, and then on press of the button, I'm going to say this dot handle press uh, syntax error. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So if you look at it, this is very very similar to writing HTML code, right? I mean, in HTML you'd say on clicks do something. I'm pretty much writing the exact same thing. So think of it as the HTML and the JavaScript worlds colliding. I also have to import a button, which I shouldn't forget to do. And uh, here's my application. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. The applications look good. The application looks good. So I'm going to go back to my command line and start up my gulp or my grunt packager, which is called, which is in, in React Native case, it's just called packager. So I'm going to start up my packager. I'm also going to open up a new tab and say, go into my directory. I know it's a little bit small. I'll make the increase the uh, font size, but I'm just going to say React Native run iOS. Now, what this is going to do is this is actually going to start running my entire. This is going to build my iOS application. Now, one thing you notice here is I didn't even have to open Xcode. I don't have to know Objective C. All I need to care about is JavaScript, and that's pretty much it. That's how React Native lets you build the whole thing. <coughs> now, the whole th the application is built, and the app should show up here on my iPhone 6. So what it does is here at the top, it says loading from localhost 8081, right? So what it is doing is it's actually trying to go fetch the files from my packager. So my packager is building. It's building 76%. So it's, it's putting my files together, converting my JSX to JavaScript, uh, bundling it all, minifying it, and then sending it over to the server. <coughs> One of the things you notice here is the, web, the development process is as if this was a web browser. 
it, though it's a real native application, it'll look like it's a web browser because guess what? I can like, so here's the application. I click on it and you get new jokes. But what I can do is I can say debug remote JS. This is going to open up Chrome for me. And if I open up Chrome, increase the font size a little bit, I can go to my Chrome Dev Tools, go inside my app slash index.js, and start setting breakpoints. That's it. I don't have to change anything else at all. This is as if I'm actually developing a website, though the application is a native application. You know what's more fun? Uh, let me stop debugging. I want to leave this page, go back to my app, say stop debugging, reload my JS, and I can say enable live reload. What enable live reload does is as I make, as I make changes in my code editor, I can say enable live reload, live reload and it'll automatically update and keep changing my application on the fly. So it doesn't even have to recompile the application. Guess why? Because it's JavaScript, it's interpreted, right? So though it's JavaScript, it doesn't have to like uh, recompile my application, which speeds up my dev process tremendously. Now imagine a world where there's a small style tweak that you have to do. You don't have to wait for the recompilation process. You just tweak the styles. In fact, let's do that. So let's say enable this here. And I'm going to say I want my font size to be I save it, and that's green for you. So the application didn't even have to reload. It just happened right away. In fact, let me do this. Uh, <coughs> the, the other good thing is, because I'm using VS Code, I can actually start setting breakpoints right here. And I can start debugging my code. So I don't even have to go all the way back to, uh, say, Xcode or Android Studio or anything like that. VS Code does it right away for you. Now, that's the authoring experience, but it's not enough to have authoring, right? There are almost 100 of you. Why don't we go test this application, right? I mean, I've built it. It doesn't seem to have any bugs. So why don't I distribute it to you guys and test it out? So let's do that. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this website called mobile.azure.com. This is a website that's something that you can use already. So if you have a React Native application, I uh, suggest you go take a look at it. But effectively, what you can do is you can come to mobile, uh, mobile Center. You can log in using your GitHub, repo, uh, GitHub credentials, or your Microsoft credentials, or your username password. And then you can say, go ahead and add a new app. So here I'm going to add an app for Android. I'm going to call it Android RN Build App. It's, it's going to be Android. And as you can see here, Mobile Center supports iOS and Android. It, uh, Windows, is, Windows support is coming pretty soon. And in terms of programming languages, it supports Java, Java uh, Objective-C, Xamarin, and React Native, all of them as first-class citizens. So I'm going to go ahead and say, add a new app. The application is added. And then you have this neat little getting started page that tells you, hey, do you want to go start tracking analytics for the app or start tracking crashes? That's actually a good, good idea. Let me go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'll have to do is go ahead and install these uh, SDKs. So I'm, I have to install the Mobile Center as Analytics SDK and the Mobile Center Crashes SDK, which I'm going to skip because I don't want to download the entire internet again. And I'm just going to go ahead and link these. So I'm going to go back to my terminal close all of these guys and say react native, what is it called? Link. Okay, react native link. <coughs> Oops. React native link, mobile center analytics. What it's going to do is it's going to scan my folders and it's going to ask me my uh, ask me for my Android app secret, which I can get from mobile center here. So I can go back to mobile center. I can say manage app and this is my Android app secret. Copy it, paste it over here. <coughs> it's also going to ask me for my iOS app secret. Now, the good thing about the iOS app secret is I've already created an iOS app. I mean, I, I'm sure you didn't, want, you didn't want to see me going through this entire process, right? So I pre-created an iOS app here. So I'm just going to use the same secret that I already had and then set up a, a couple of defaults. What it is doing here is it's actually going and modifying your native Objective-C or your Java files. So as a JavaScript developer, you don't even have to worry about any of these things. It'll, it'll, it's all automatically taken care of you, taken care of for you. So if you look at my changes, Hit start. Wow, that's a lot of changes, right? But all of that is automatically taken care of you. You don't have to worry about any of the changes here. Now, what I just did is I added the crashes SDK and the analytics SDK. Let me also go back to my application and enable crashes and analytics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my <coughs> going to go back to my index.js. I'm going to say import put analytics from what is it called? Mobile. Thank you, VS Code. That, that's what it was called. 
So I'm going to import that and I'm going to create a function called track analytics. I'm just going to call it track. What is the thing? Track event. What should it take? It takes an event name which is new joke or button press. Let's call it that. <coughs> and then whenever the button is pressed, I need to call the track method. <coughs> so I'm going to save this and uh, let me go ahead and make all the commit all these changes. So I'm going to say git start, git add dot, git commit minus m, more stuff. Please do not write commit messages like this git push origin master actually you know what for that i need to create a github repository let me do that first github.com so hey i'm not cheating this is brand new right new repository build up git push origin master and over the wi-fi it's going to take a while but once it's done Yep, it's almost done. Refresh my app and... There you go. So all of my code is now available on GitHub. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start... <coughs> the way I'm going to set it up is, henceforth, during this demo, every time I make a commit, I'm going to start automatically building my iOS and Android applications and start distributing it to you, distributing it to you guys. So for that, I'm going to go back to Mobile Center, go to the, go to the build, uh, build service, and say, hey, I want to use my GitHub repository, so I'm going to pick my repository. I just have one branch, so I'm going to pick up the master branch. And I'm going to say set up my branch. So that's all I have to do. What's fun is signing is also super simple. I just say, hey, enable signing. And then I just upload a key store file in case of Android. So let me just go ahead and quickly create a key store file. A key store file is created using the command called key tool that's available right here. So if you just enter default values, it'll give you a key store. Open. So here's my key store file, which I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop in my Android application. So there you go. I'm going to enter my super secret password. Anyone guess what my password is? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to en enable that, and I'm going to say distribute this to all these people. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to do is I actually don't want to distribute it to this group. Let me actually go ahead and create a group. So I'm going to go ahead, say new group, testers. I'm going to go ahead and create this group. And go back to build. Continue setting it up. I'm going to say, assign my build, sure. Key store file was, where was my key store file? Key store file is here. Put it up here. Type in the password. <coughs> distribute builds that's weird it didn't show up yet I'm just gonna say save here uh, let me go ahead and do that for the iOS application it's very very similar uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I already have a have a build definition that was already set up so I'm just going to show you what it is so that I don't walk you through the exact stuff here, I'm also going to go ahead and add you to the tester group. So here, there was a tester group. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. So let me see if I can do that for the Android group, Android thing also. So this is saving. And let me just, oh, I don't have to click on build now because it's already queued. Sorry. Cancel, 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 cancel. Don't mess up my demo, please. OK. So let's see. Can, can I change my distribution group yet? Oh yeah, now it shows up. So I'm just gonna say save. Cancel this build so that the new build pick is, is picked up. Okay, awesome. So this build is queued up. Now while it is building, we have almost 10 minutes to kill. Uh, so in that time frame, let's do this. Uh, if I can request you to take out your mobile phones and go to this website called aka.ms slash react native. Uh, on this website, you'll see two options. One, it'll ask you what type of phone it is. Second one is it'll ask you for your email address. And I'm not going to sell your email address or anything like that. This email address is just a way for you to automatically get added to these groups. So for example, in this group, I wrote a quick script that, will auto that if you go and register on that, it'll actually start adding you to this. And uh, <coughs> the interesting thing here is uh, all of Mobile Center is extremely uh, scriptable. 
all of these APIs that you see are actually RESTful APIs. So I pretty much what I did was I hacked together a Google Forms application. I added, a, added some RESTful calls that just makes RESTful API uh, uh, calls over it and adds people to Mobile Center. So let's see if you guys are able to get yourself added to it. Or is it crashing? Oh yeah, so looks like there were three testers, now there are six testers, right? So looks like people are able to add themselves. So that's awesome. So here's what's going to happen. As soon as the application is ready, you, all of you who registered are going to get an email saying, hey, the application is ready, so please go ahead, install the applications on your phone, and test it out. Now, while that is happening, uh, I promise you that I'll build not just for iOS and Android, but also for Windows and for the web, right? Let's go do that. So I'm going to go back to my demo, and I'm going to open up VS Code. Uh, we don't need all of these tracking functions for now. But here's what I'm going to do. For building it for Windows, I need to install this plugin called RNPM Plugin Windows. Uh, the reason I have to do this is because <coughs> uh, Facebook by default has iOS and Android support. A team at Microsoft worked on the Windows support and is working to contribute it back to the community. And right now, it's still a little bit different. So uh, you have to install RNPM Plugin Windows, which again, I have already done. And once you do that, you say React Native Windows. Now what this is going to do is, just like you have an Android folder and an iOS folder here, it will go ahead and create a Windows folder. So this just got created. And this Windows folder is basically the exact same React Native application. So you have the Windows folder. You also have an index.windows.js. So just like index.android, I'm going to copy the same startup code and paste it in my Windows. So this will, again, take up my jokes app and stuff. And what I also did was, uh, I tried opening parallels. There it is. And I copied this over to Windows, because if I have to run it on a Windows machine, I need a Windows machine, right? So uh, what I did is I went ahead and started the packager and said React Native run Windows. What this will do is it will pick up the solution file, use Visual Studio to compile it all the way from the command line, and you will get all of these. Here's the application that's running exactly the same thing on Windows. Uh, the exact same source code, no differences. Uh, the internet here is probably on the internet on panels is a little bit slower, but here's the exact same uh, Windows, the exact same application, no changes at all, running on Windows. Uh, let me close Parallels because it's hogging a lot of memory. Uh, I'm going to just say uh, shut down, uh, sus suspend for now, and sure. <coughs> let me go ahead and create a website, right? So that's the next step. So here I have Android, iOS, and Windows. Let me go ahead and create a, pro a portal called Web. And uh, looks like I might not have time for that. Uh, let me quickly show you the, uh, all the features of Mobile Center and then get back to this if I have time, because it's almost 11.50. So uh, one of the advantages of using Mobile Center is, just like I showed you build, you can also go ahead and distribute your applications. So you should have gotten an email as soon as the application was ready. There's a pretty good chance that the application is going to crash, because I intentionally made a mistake in the application. And I was going to show you how to fix that. What I'm going to do is, after the talk, I'm going to go upload the fix and push another fix so that the application works perfectly for you. But the way I would have picked up that crash was it's going to show you JavaScript stack traces. And that's actually something that's super cool with uh, Mobile Center. One of the biggest advantages of Mobile Center is, apart from iOS and Android native crashes, it shows you JavaScript tra stack traces. And that's how you can typically debug your applications. The other thing is it actually shows you analytics. So it's actually going to be showing you how many people installed the app, how many people opened the app, and all of that. And that's pretty cool. So heading back to my slide deck, in this demo, what we basically saw was four things. We saw React Native for Windows. I didn't have time to demo the entire thing, but uh, uh, my team is sitting all the way at the end in the mobile booth. Come over and talk to us if you want to know how it works. I showed you React. I didn't have time to show you React XP, but React XP is a way to build applications for iOS, Android, and window, Windows, and the web. Uh, I also kind of showed you VS Code. VS Code lets you do debugging, IntelliSense, and typically all the things that you expect from VS Code. VS Code has first-class support for React and React Native. And finally, I showed you Visual Studio Mobile Center, which is an end-to-end -end DevOps story for building your iOS and Android, building your React Native applications at the end of the day. We also looked quickly at comparing Cordova, React Native, and Xamarin. And that's pretty much all I had for my session. Thank you. I'm going to be hanging around. Come talk to me about questions. I'm super passionate about React Native. So if you want any questions, any help, come talk to me, and I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Thank you.